this is also the setup people are going to see when I start streaming. Wait, hey, okay, okay, we finna talk about that shit. Wait, Blair, you're recording the screen? Right now I am. Oh, I bet I ain't finna do that shit. Then I'll do it later. All right, I'm gonna go press record on GarageBand real quick too. Hold up. All right. All right. I'm ready when y'all are. I ooh ooh yes, the first sir. episode. Yes, uh, sir. It's been so long. Yes, sir. <laughs> Niggas is excited, Joe. We ain't been on I Swing Thousand. I bro, I know. <laughs> bro, our last interview was July. I'm yeah, pretty it's sure. been a minute. I still got used to my camera being here, and now my computer. So, bro, hey, I, I'll stare at my computer. Yo, that's <laughs> that's me as fuck, bro. I do that all the time. I'll be playing games, not even looking at nobody. I'm like, yo, I'm so sorry. (laughs) (laughs) But damn, yo, Blair, you trying to intro us into season two, bro? Of course, man. Hey, everybody, we're in season two with Swank Balls. This is the first episode of season two. Got my bro Dave with me here. Uh, our boy E's taking the season off to focus on school and graduating college and all that so that he can move up in the world. And we got one of the greatest hip hop producers to ever live, Thelonious Martin, with us here today. How's it going, yes, Thelonious? It is going amazing. That is a humbling intro. Um, it, I, I've always had, like, not trouble with, but I always find it like, interesting because, like, I'm still a student of shit. So when people are like, Oh man, you're I'm like bro. I'm still trying to get mad at to call me back. Like <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. You know, it's definitely real. Like when you see other people start to actually recognize, like that you making your shit known, and like you be working dumb hard, bro. Every single time I'm on IG, I see your story, bro. It's just new beat after new beat after new beat, bro. Like you be working. <laughs> so That's so cool, man. Oh, yeah. Small. <laughs> I played sports growing up, so my pops was always on some. There's a kid in China right now. Why you sleeping? He working type shit. So yep. <laughs> I try to make at least a beat a day. I work from. I try try to treat like a nine to five. I, I work like Monday through Friday, nine to five. Those are the office yeah. hours. Unless right. I take like a mental break day, I'm I'm in. Yeah. I remember uh, we would be playing Call of Duty, and you'd be like, "Yo, hit me up after five. I gotta work, bro. Like <laughs> I had to get that shit done." That's how I gotta be. Bro, I remember when I was in high school, uh, you were doing, I think it was $800, or was it, I forget how many, what the price was for eight, eight track EPs. Was it 350 or was it 800 I forget how much it was, but I remember people were all stacking their money just to do an EP with you back in the day, though. That's real. I've always tried to, I've always tried to do some shit where, like, if you ain't signed to a label, if you're an upcoming rapper, because I remember those days finally. I remember... I mean, saving money to pay to do do the artwork and like all this that and the third. So like, I've always tried to do something while I cut deals with people that, you know what I mean, that don't have a label budget. I don't have like somebody selling drugs yeah. behind them or some shit. Like that's why I, I'll do monthly like a hundred dollar beat sales or whatever just to fuck with the people and, and stay connected. But if you sign to a label, it's five k and up. <laughs> I remember back in the day you did a, a, a I don't know if it was an EP or an album from my boy KID. Uh, pools closing and that shit. I mean, shoot, I've been listening to your shit since I was like, because pretty much when I got in, when I really got passionate about hip hop, I was in my like, freshman year of high school. And I remember at that time it was like 2011, 2013, and you know that was the the prime of what I label the mixtape era for me. You know, Joey Badass, you know, Chance, uh, freaking Odd Future's killing it. I just graduated high school, 2011. I'm old. I'm 28. <laughs> But uh, you were all over the place with that, with everything I was listening to back then. It was, you know, you you were on almost every like project that, in my opinion, was uh, in the prime of my in my hip hop listening. You know what I mean? The prime of my hip hop intake, I should say. I did pretty well during the blog era. I was trying to always stay connected and like see what was next. And the blogs, you know, it was a good way to keep current and, and stay up to date with shit. So like. I smoked this a tweeted a Joey Badass song when it was Panty Raid. So Joey's like 16 at this point. I was I've always been pretty savvy with social media, so I instantly hit up Joey on the fact that I've had Facebook. <laughs> Damn. 
found him on Facebook, hit him up. I was like, yo, I got beats for you. <laughs> had to. That's that. <laughs> That led to me doing drinks with him and Steve's recipe. Steve's recipe. Wendy and Becky drink with him and Chance. Uh, I come back to Chicago every summer and check out a be here every Christmas, whatever. And I remember coming back to Chicago while in high school and linking with Vic. And this is like Vic and kids these days, like super early. Which, which was wild because I ended up DJing for Vic while some of the high school at some I can't, the name, I can't ever remember the name of this fucking festival in Jersey. They do it like every year. It's not it's not my it's Summer Jam? Nah, it's not Summer Jam. It's the one where they, it's like Oh, it's not during summer. It's just a it's a festival they have all kinds of mu- music. I it at this festival I remember if you really was in the blog right Y'all remember XV, and I beat him in Mortal Kombat backstage. Um, but I DJ for Vic before I moved back to Chicago, and that kind of from there we kind of was was hand in hand. And me and Vic had made an EP. We I was at the trap watching Kids These Days rehearse. It was mm-hmm. Kid Chance to Kansas studio. I was like, oh shit, yo, it was good. And shout out to Vic because. Vic really just introduced me to everybody and was like, y'all, yeah. this this Thelonious, I mean, and I was, I wanted to work with everybody. I was like, where I got beats? Right. And would just play beats. We would freestyle for hours. I had nothing better to do other than go to uh, be at school. So I was literally just studio, school, studio, yeah. school. I really was just a, a, a studio rat. Chance uh, was doing 10 day, uh was working on 10 day at the time. And I remember me and him was passing out his CD around campus my freshman year. Yeah, nah, the blog era was nice. I'm like thinking back on all these different times and stories and like shows yeah. we went to. I'm up with it. I, I, I never realized like how long I've been hit, like doing shit. Facts. I know Facts. I joke about me being old. Like I'm only 28. So like I still got a, a lot of shit to do, a lot of work to be done. Oh, yeah. But it was me because I have like young cats that's like 18 and 19. Talk to my little homies, the, uh, dang, little, my homies, the Burns twins. They're like 21. 21? Yeah. They're about 21, but they told me, like, yo, like, your shit is the same way. Same way I, I caught Dilla when I was 14, like going to high school, like, this is my everything. Yeah. They were like, yo, we like, we seen you, like, we, we bumped Doom, Dilla, Mad Lib, and we found your shit. And I'm sitting there like mind blown, like, yo, what the fuck? Yeah, bro. Sometimes you, you don't stop and smell the flowers and realize. Facts, you, like, bro. It's hard to, because you be so busy thinking about just grinding, grinding, grinding all the time, like just getting better that you don't realize like when you actually did get better because you try and get to that next point like all the time. I got Grammys to win. I got classic albums to finish. I still, in my mind, I'm still like, I'm so still much shit. That, that was hungry in 2011. And it's 10 years later, I'm still the same way. I'm like, nah, I got. Yes, sir. I mean, it's bills to pay. I mean, Hell yeah. you know, kids and nothing, but like, it's bills to pay. Like, shit. I, 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 I want to go to Japan. I've been to Japan yet. Bro, I need to go to Japan too. <laughs> you and me both, bro. I'm definitely trying to make my way down there. I think it's crazy the drop off between uh the that blog area blog era, the twenty eleven, you know, twenty fourteen era and then like the internet rap that came right after it. Like internet rap changed at like the snap of our yeah. fingers. And I'm like I don't get it twisted. There are like a lot of like SoundCloud, like, you know, kind of fun, like trap sounding rappers that I like. Like I like a lot of the shit that's going on right now, but I think the difference between what was going on one year and then what completely changed in 20 2014 to 2016 it's so different because i feel like from that 2011 to 2014 2015 time i think so many people were on a very lyrical like uh bringing back the boom bap kind of wave and they were also on some you, you could see the influence of dilla on that that 2011 to 2014 era the influence of mad lib all these young cats back then you know you had guys like joey who's only 16, 17 at the time, and he's out here rapping on Mad Lib's beats, on Dilla's beats, 
and then now you know the 16 17 year olds now they want to rap on uh, don't get it twisted i like a lot of producers they all want to rap on a pierre born beat you know shout out pierre like, yeah. you know pierre goes hard but the, the difference between the the types of sound has changed drastically so fast right. but i'm and i'm not even it's uh it's weird at this point in time rap had became regionless so like in the soundcloud days at least you got artists like Lil Uzi who comes to the forefront. Lil Uzi's from Philly. Yeah. <laughs> when you think Philly, you think the roots, you think freeway, you think like this it's a home of spitters. And I've been to Philly. I love Philadelphia. Love Philadelphia. Great city. Soulful city. So that's you kind of expect a certain there's a point in time where Philly was like the breeding ground for MCs. Yeah. Like Rockefeller's just signing niggas from Philly, like, yo, they all raw. It's just sign these niggas. But then you move to a SoundCloud era, you got an artist like Uzi that comes to the forefront. Uzi is like, hey, that's a regionless sound. That's it became more of like an energy. So then you got all these different pockets of people pop it up and become popular without a, a sound. Maybe like Atlanta, I guess, will essentially be the the location if you want to tie a, a sound to a location during this era. Yeah. But now you got the kids that came up listening to that, that's making music, that idolize that. And you got that, but the same breath, we get Griselda, like, that's obviously New York. Go crazy. You got Duke Deuce, who I love. Right. Obviously, <laughs> Memphis in the mug. <laughs> and so was, and we started to get like artists that really like represent the, the places they're at and the sound they're at. And the same yeah. token, since the game is so diverse, you got, you know, on the other side of it. You got cats that's like, it's more so about matching the energy than matching a certain location or whatever. Yeah. And it's, it's dope though. It's, it's weird because, you know, sometimes if you make a certain style of music, people expect you to only listen to, you know, certain kind of like. To that, yeah. I like standing on couches. I DJ too. So, like, I before I, it was funny because I, I didn't drink or smoke until I was like 23. So I was at a couch. The first drink I had was the bottle we popped for the ASAP Rocky placement I got at the day the album came out. That was my first. I had to. I didn't smoke until me and Topaz did wireless in London, and I had ran out of edibles. <laughs> I was like, he had to smoke. <laughs> I had to smoke. We was on the roof of the Airbnb in London. We just performed wireless. I'm like. Fuck it, that's good weed. Hey, my this, uh, Topaz, I've known Topaz since. Freshman year of high school. Okay. He look at me crazy like, you want to smoke? Oh, yeah, that bro. And been smoking since. You been smoking since. I like sitting on couches. I like pour, popping bottles. I might like a glass of cognac here and there. Play that Travis Scott one time. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. Niggas be, did you, did you hear this new underground rapper? He, he beat sound like Mad Lips. I'm like, bro. I'm trying to, you scaring the bitches, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you scaring the shorties, bro. Get up out of here. <laughs> hey. Like, been inside so long that, like, I, I can't even remember, like, what it's like going to the club like that. Bro, I, I feel that. I seen this one meme. It was like, this, someone said, my face when I got my shorty in the whip with me and the MF Doom song comes on. And it just, it shit had me crying, bro. Like, I can imagine, like, Nah, yeah, if you're in shorty bomb doom, find her ring size. Oh, <laughs> she she the <Facts>. one. <laughs> That's what I always told myself, bro. She got great taste. Facts. Shit, bro. you talking about memes? That make me think of the fucking uh the we versus me memes, bro. The series. You saw the Leafly article? Neo, I didn't. I didn't see it, bro. My friend was roasting me in a group chat. It's like this nigga only been smoking for three years. He a he a fucking weed kind of sort. I was saying, <laughs> bro, them shits are funny as hell. Shit is hilarious. I think the best things in terms of like comedy, because I'm a. That's probably one of my like secret like loves. Like people know I love music. People know I, I love food. Obviously, I'll be cooking and shit. Yeah, I fucking love comedy. I, I love, love like laughing. Like, I took classes at Second City to do like stand up and shit. I was gonna go to open mics before uh, quarantine shit hit. I would have been fired, bro. That shit, Nate. That shit, dead. That shit, over with. <laughs> yeah, bro. That's not happening, bro. Niggas be doing all this shit virtual now. Like that is. 
It's just not the same. That's not how I want to start, though. I want to yeah, go to, like, I want to bomb that shit gotta be in front wrong, of 20 bro. people I don't know yeah. and, like, hear the room get silent. Like, I, I want a real <laughs> deal. Like, I don't want a virtual one. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's not the same. But the number one thing to it, you got to be able to laugh at yourself. <laughs> facts. Facts, facts, facts. Both of us smacked in the crib one day. I was like, I need to figure out a way to represent or uh, uh, present a way how, how, how I'm feeling at the time. <laughs> I feel it. Right. I found that Malcolm X Tupac shit, bro. It was a rap. Right. <laughs> uh, instantly knew. <laughs> I came up on I came up on Tumblr. Like that's the that's the internet era I got in. Yeah. Obviously, we had Facebook when I was in high school, but like Tumblr was the shit. Tumblr mm-hmm. was essentially Twitter, but with like blog posts. Yeah. But anyone that's watching this and has no idea, but <laughs> Tumblr was the best place you even think that best possible. But they, like Tumblr was the shit. Fuck with Tumblr. And Tumblr was tough. I didn't get on Tumblr like for all that much. I started with Twitter and then I just was always on Twitter because Twitter was just funny as hell to me all the time, like always. Twenty four seven, just pure comedy, bro. And there was no filter back then, but I know Tumblr was like crazy as hell too. I'm about to say, you want to talk about no, no, no filter? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> there was like no rule. It was the wild west, but it was also crazy because like. Frank Ocean went. Frank Ocean was on Tumblr and like post a snippet of that song before it came out, some shit like that. Yeah, that shit is tough. Did y'all ever hear the app called Secret? Nah, bro. So this this app came out. <laughs> this app came out like when I was in high school. I remember we all, we only used it for like a couple months in high school because our school banned it. Like this is how crazy this shit was. But basically, like you wouldn't even. It was all anonymous posting. You would see how like far away from you the post was. <laughs> So like so like everyone went on there just to like hell. throw shade, like throw drama, like everything. And they were like girl, girls nudes at our school were getting leaked, bro. Like oh, crazy yeah. shit. Wow. And then like uh we were yeah, at a graduation. No, I, I never had one. I never had a secret. But like this kid next to me, this kid next to me had one, he was standing next to me, and we're at we're at the class before us graduation, and then he's like he typed in there, he was like, Yeah, if I get like three hundred likes or something, I'll go I'll steal this cop's fucking gun out of his fucking like holster, or whatever. I was hey, like, and if he posted it, and then like he all he got them. Obviously, the kid was capped. Like the kid wasn't doing it. Yeah, but uh, no. the, the next then the next day we had a whole assembly, like the whole fucking like every class had their own assembly. Like, oh no, this app's done. Like you, you guys, you guys, you guys violated. Like you're done, pretty much. So, yeah, crazy. remember assemblies, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's such a crazy concept to me. The the school would just be like put them all in one place. Facts. And Facts. Expect them all They'd to like, listen the and not talk to their right now. Like, next <laughs> Everybody shut the hell up. Talk listen. to two hundred like, kids. What? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Damn. we are, we used to act up at our assemblies. Like, for one, you're expecting us all you to be in the same to. room and not act up, man. Like bro, I don't know. What, I don't know how roasted, schools bro. think of this. Like shit. shit is popping off at the assembly. That shit exactly. is fun. You see your friend, you you ain't got class with. The moment you see that. Bro, you see you all, you see like, all of them, bro. You like seven. <laughs> <laughs> you see all your whole fucking crew just chilling. Y'all all gonna sit in the back, and then you know niggas is getting roasted, and that's gonna be the whole time. And then we finna get talked bad to, always. I remember they. Uh, I can't remember. What's the journalist? Who got the fucked up ass mustache, fat ass mustache, Roberto or some shit? Uh, uh, no, Geraldo, Geraldo Rivera. <laughs> they brought his goof ass to our high school one time. We we in the assembly like this nigga cap, bro. This is some bullshit. Like, why y'all brought this nigga here? We don't want to listen to it. It's crazy because like years later, turns out motherfuckers racist. <laughs> I'm like, why did y'all have this motherfucker? Damn. Yeah. I feel like bro. it'd be like a case for hella people though. Bro, we had the governor of Delaware come into our uh, come into our freaking school for an assembly just for our senior class. And this, uh, cause our school needed funding or whatever, or something like that. And they were trying to like, trying to like sweet talk this man for funding. This, this man comes in. And so mind you, my senior class was like bad as shit. Like we did not give a fuck to so this. So they were wow. passing the mic. First of all, they passed around the mic to students, students who don't care. They're seniors. They want the fuck out of there. They so yeah, yeah. Very bad idea. They passed the mic to students for, for quote unquote questions for the governor. So, okay, two two like kids that nobody really cared about. They were nerdy kids. Like they asked questions that like were actually important. And then they pass this the mic to this one kid. He grabs the mic and says, "Ashley, will you go to homecoming with me?" 
and then the whole freaking gym erupts bro we we're like oh shit oh shit the governor's <laughs> sitting there like you know like what's wrong with this school man like that shit was so fucking geeky, man. Yeah, shot from a government official? He- and she said no, too. And she said no. Hey, and she shit. said no. <laughs> oh. I know y'all didn't get no funding. Hell no, we ain't got no funding, bro. Hell they were no. like, fuck this. Di- <laughs> these dumbass kids. Get money to these kids? Motherfucker just got told no in front of a lot of people. What? <laughs> the, the, the this nigga don't get no show. The principal walked up to him and like said, "Yeah, you, you gotta go, man." And then uh, we I was in photography class at the time, so they so the photography teacher was like taking pictures for the, for the shit. He got the picture of the principal's face right after like right after the kids said that. Man, he I'd never seen one like pissed off face in my life. Like I thought that guy was about to like beat that kid's ass or something. You're talking about his money too, right there, man. Yeah, I would have been mad as hell too, but like. He should have been ready for that. That's his own Exactly. Boat. I wouldn't have asked any seniors into, unless they were... They would have had to be, like, the top five kids in the class. That's the only people he would have been talking to. Everybody else would have been sitting down in the back. I'd have been like, yo, shut up, too. Or, like, the student council or some shit, bro. Some. Don't work with kids. You don't work with animals. <laughs> There's a reason for that. <laughs> they be wildin'. Uh, Got the signs, you know, one piece. I mean, in the crib trying to smoke like him. Hey, yeah, this hand turned around. Bro, I just can't do one piece, dog. I can't. The why does it take a show three hundred episodes <laughs> to get good? Why? Why? <laughs> it gets like first ten. Ten? Your cap. No, Your cap. The first ten part is when he pull up or uh. The alligator dude, bro. Whoever that is, that that's the only time to get good, bro. When he makes sure he asks, when, he, when Luffy makes sure he asks him for help, that's when the show get good. But that's like thirty episodes. In. Nah, bro. <laughs> show that, so- that show is not good from the beginning. I swear, it only gets good when he starts fight. Cause like he doesn't get any better, like at all, until he fights that alligator dude. That's like episode three sixty, bro. Like that's. That's it's, he uh, it's, he it's not that far. Year, his second year episode, like two something. That's still like uh, yeah, uh, me and Dan have been shit talking about anime or <laughs> this is the whole time. Cause. It's crazy because I'm new to anime. I just started watching anime this past year. Like I, I'm, I'm like fucking uh, three seasons into Shippuden. Very nice. Very but, nice. Uh, yeah, I just. I just got, my, I'm on like the 20, maybe 10th episode of the third season of Ship It In, and then uh, I watch, well, I mean, so the Hulu seasons are set up weird, so apparently the Hulu, the way they got the seasons set up aren't numerically, like, correct, so. It's like by, like, whatever, like, happens, season yeah. back to a crush yeah. 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 yeah, and then I've I've watched My Hero, I'm all caught up on My Hero, that shit's my, that's, that's my shit right there. I that's tried to watch fire. Attack on Titan. I couldn't really, like, Attack on Titan was, it was great, but it was so hard to follow, man. What? That's because you're not using your noodle. Exactly. You're not using your noodle. I don't got no brain, bro. (laughs) Yo, that show is fire. If you don't like Attack on Titan, like, you're wild. I'm going to go back and watch it for real. Yo, it is. But, like, bro, the creator literally said, all I'm trying to do is break all my fans' hearts. And then go open up like a potato farm or some shit. Like, bro, he's disrespectful. He does not care about anybody, bro. He already show so much better, G. They <sighs> kill, they kill off characters with no regard, no with wind up. Like, that's bro. Like, so like that's certain shows, certain shows that do that build up shit or kind of build the character up. You kind of know yeah, something's happen. So you for. know something's finna happen. Even but, Game of Thrones, like Game of Thrones, you be like, all right, this character finna die. Like, uh, yeah, like you know somebody's coming. The for prince, you. the the motherfucker, the little little. Yeah, kid, yeah, yeah. J- 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 like Joffrey. We knew, we yeah. knew Joffrey was gone. It was over for him. Niggas, was, niggas was wasn't letting that slide for that long. Nah, God. yeah, no, he was cap. He thought he was the shit. But like in Attack on Titan, they be like, hey, bro, like she just had a successful mission, or like he just fucked around and just turned up yo like and then next episode Last. twice <laughs> dead like you like bro why why i love them why would you do that 
Like, bro, they wait until you like a character a lot and be like, <laughs> dead. Like, bro, come on, dog. Hate a character, you know, before you kill them off. You know who else uh, do that? Have you ever seen a comic got killed? Bro, that, Actually, sh about that show is fire. Y'all should definitely get out of watch, bro. They kill anybody. Bro. Wow, mobs like, go on streaming service somewhere to watch. I heard that shit's fire too. Mobs like it's a whole bunch of shit. Honestly, yeah, bro. I, I, I love the fact that people are like into anime now. I was one of those kids that had, you know, was watching Adult Swim, and my yeah. mom was like, "My mom let me stay up late on weekends." Always. You call that tsunami block, bro? Always. Ooh, I, I'm talking. I'm talking like late '90s tsunami block when they were showing like. Big old fucking Gundam Wing, fucking uh, Rush like all that shit. Just so that was shit I, to me, that was just regular Saturday night cartoons or whatever. Like, facts. I thought that shit was adorable. I was like, Dragon Ball, hell yeah, Dragon Ball. Yeah, like, you think that shit is just tough, bro. And then people was come at niggas sideways, bro. Like, talk crazy. I'm gonna hold you. But one of my friends in middle school was super into Naruto, he was weird. It wasn't the show. Was I, I feel that. I feel I'm that. Naruto a person like this weird nigga like this shit. Damn, I'm not gonna I watch this that. shit. <laughs> I feel that. Like sometimes people are just weird as hell. But like most of the time, uh, and most of the time niggas was just hating on people who like the anime. For no I'm reason. not gonna lie, bro. Like growing up, like I always looked at kids who watch anime to be like the weird kids. Like I'm not gonna lie. And then like weird it's perfectly fine. I understand. You. Yeah, and if you was cool, you watched like Cowboy Bebop or like Dragon Ball. If you was nerdy, nerdy, you was running like Naruto between classes and you look at the motherfucker like, what's this nigga G? Like, <laughs> I'm not the you good watch what show? I'm not watching that show. Oh, no. Because <laughs> my cousin was mad weird. She was like heavy into anime. Like, like every time I would go over there. And mind you, I only seen my cousin like a few times a year because she lived so far away anyway. Like a few times every few years, really, and like she was just always into anime and shit. And I was like, "Yo, if there's anyone in this world I don't want to be like, it's her." No offense, because I love her and everything, but like I just looked at that standard as something I didn't want to be. And then like I don't know, I wouldn't. She was like, "Ah, ah, you like hell, nah." <laughs> yeah, nah. <laughs> but then nah. my homeboy got me into anime last year. He's like, "Yo, you should try it at least." Like he said, "You should uh should try it with my heroes." So I was like, "Sure enough, I'll just get it." I said, "Fuck it, I'll give it a try." You put on my hero. Started, it's fire. It was a, it was a great I make start. Everybody start with Death Note. Always. You pay. <laughs> I make everybody start with Death Note because, like, you can't not like Death Note because, like, it's so smart. Like, you're gonna think you nice if you could follow it. So, like, you're gonna want to watch it because you're gonna be like, bro, I understand, but you don't really understand. But like, <laughs> or like shampoo or some shit like that. All right, yeah, that's also fire. Nah, yeah, I like to throw people into it, so they gotta know anime is real. Like, they gotta get them outcomes that come with this shit, bro. Like, it's, it's not gonna be no ditzy happy ending. Yeah, no, like I'm gonna put you on the good animes, like the shit where real shit happens. That's the good shit. Yeah, <laughs> start going. They start going back and finding all the retro shit. Facts, yo. Because it's like it's wild. To, I think everything will will look or feel new when like a younger crowd embraces it. So right now, anime is right, like, right. It, it, I ain't yeah. never seen, well, I mean, maybe, but like the past, but like Hype Land is putting out merch every other, like, yeah, yeah. I'm on TikTok. I love TikTok. The anime part of TikTok is wild because it's a lot right. of like, people. Like, like how many of oh, y'all like cosplay? I didn't know that. Because when I was a kid, right. that was, I didn't really see that kind of shit. But then I think back even before that, my pops, my pop, it was it, like uh, Evangelion, fucking uh, uh, Neon, older shit, like the older Gundam Wings. It's like, I'm like, oh damn, I didn't realize yeah. this has been a forever thing. Like, <laughs> facts, facts. There were some nice ass animes. I think my favorite, like, older anime is probably Initial D. Initial D is fire. It's not like too, too old, but like, it's, it's decently old. But that joint's fire, bro. There's a free app called Retro Crush. It's not, I, that sounded like an ad the moment I said it. But this is an app called Retro Crush, and they have, uh, it's free. They have all the, like, retro, like, anime movies. You get, like, old Lupin the Third. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna definitely check that shit. 
Which is so fire. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna watch a samurai pizza cats on there. For real? They got this, that shit. This uh, girl at my work where she made she made herself like not likable by me from the jump because she would spoil like anime shows for me. Oh yeah, you told so, me. So <laughs> hey, yeah, <laughs> nah. bro. Honest, and the shit the shit that sucks is like like so she, bro, bro now nah, she's cool as shit though. But like now nah, this this one time she just spoiled like uh, Naruto for me. It was right at the end of the original Naruto. Naruto. Uh, it was it was when they were all chasing after Sasuke, and. I admit, mind you, I thought that Neji's character had died at that one point. Oh, I thought he was about to die, whatever. Like, I was like, yo, Neji's in this fight. And she was like, oh, this sucks because he dies this next episode. And, and I didn't realize she was doing it to fuck with me because I found out he never died. So, but like the whole time thinking like she spoiled, she spoiled it for me. I was so mad at her, bro. Like, I was just sitting there. I put in like my fucking like earbuds. I was not even watching Naruto for like, like three weeks. And I was just sitting there listening to Griselda, just thinking about how mad I was at this girl for bro. real. My man's prince was playing Call of Duty, and niggas weren't listening to what he was saying. He was like, yo, go to B. Like, we gotta take B, bro. Wasn't nobody listening. But he heard them talking about anime, and they were trash, bro. And they were talking about Demon Slayer. Bro, this man, Prince, spoiled the whole show for them. He was like, yo, you guys talking about Demon Slayer? And then told them everything that happens at the end of that shit. And they quit. And I was like, bro, why? Why would you do that to somebody, dog? I'm so late on a movie to come in a fucking city. Bro, same. Same. That man is petty. Wow, I'm to watch that shit over you. Bro, they got the strictest laws over there, bro. There's no chance that shit is anywhere. That shit is locked down, bro. Dark web. <laughs> that ass. Everybody think it's Slayer G? <laughs> I haven't even watched it yet, for real, for real. Like I said, the only, the only I'm just, I'm real fucking new to anime, so you gotta like I've only, only I've really literally on twenty one G. You gonna have to check it out. Too, that 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 boy Tanjiro, that that boy dangerous. <laughs> well, like if you like something like a good, this good character development, it, the action is incredible. It it's, is uh, good it's one of the few like uh, CGI animes that actually looks really really good. Yeah, it does look good. Right. You know what else has good character development, bro? Uh, Hunter x Hunter. That shit is perfect character that's development. The, yeah. That's the best anime about a nigga ducking child support. Bro, that man be dipping on his son. He said, you gonna visit me, bro? He said, gonna be gone, man. <laughs> he said it was just a warning as to what was gonna happen. <laughs> oh, He's funny man. as hell. I caught Flack on Twitter for saying I didn't like the uh, Chimera Ant arc. Niggas um, with me about that shit. I was like, too much filler. It was cool, but like, it was just the fact that they made that man that strong. Like, Netro was out here, bro. Like, come on, dog. <laughs> There's no way. Like, like that was a freezer. Like, that was the version of the dude change shape, change forms. He stronger as hit. Like, come on, man. It was, it was just, I don't know. I didn't like the character design of the whole sh- also, I don't like bugs. I don't like bugs. Neither do I. That shit is foul. Um, I, <laughs> people were getting mopped up like everyone else in their class was getting destroyed. I was like, bro, what is happening right now? Why? Why is no like these are you're losing the caterpillars? Like, bro, come on, boss. <laughs> up. Like <laughs> that shit is not okay. Fact, this follows up after the whole then it. Okay, so like I smoke a good amount of weed. Also do shrooms. So to watch a show. Be like, all right, we're going to put these niggas inside a video game, inside Bro, the show. That, I'm, I'm sitting there with a headache doing this whole episode. Like, y'all niggas tripping. No facts. That's, that org was fire, though. That org was fire. So it I was. was. I was that sitting there in space that one day like, yo, like, I'm watching the show, right? And these niggas is inside a video game. Yeah. Show. <laughs> yeah, it was extra. I can imagine being all streams would be a little bit crazy seeing that. <laughs> One show that's not anime, and I've meant to talk about it on this podcast about every episode I hop on here, and I always forget about it. Did you guys watch the Wu Tang series? I know Dave has. I haven't watched a single episode. I heard it's good though. Damn. Bro, it is so good, man. So good. And you know, it, it, it's crazy because it talks about so much more than just like their their music careers because they had so much animosity between the whole group before they even really officially became a rap group. And I I didn't know all this shit, you know? I, I didn't grow right. up during that era. But I mean, Wu-Tang is so iconic. But I mean, and it was kind of cool because they were like, 
they were they showed in the show how they implemented kung fu movies into their music and how you know back in the day so many dudes like it, so many guys like fuck with kung fu kung fu movies and now i feel like nowadays you see so many artists that implement anime into their music now too right. i mean Lil uzi can't go a song without an anime reference he has every every car has an anime like a thing on it like it's crazy right that's, that's, right. a, that's right. an interesting connection. If you think about it, I was like, that was their anime. Like, yeah. But, because then that, that mean, all the couple kind of really led to them, other people kind of like even paying attention to anime. Branching out, yeah, branching out to that. So, so speaking of Wu Tang, yeah. speaking of Wu Tang, who's your guys, uh, who's your guys' number one rapper in Wu Tang? It's 1A, 1B. It's Ghost and Ray. I feel that. I did get to oh. see Method Man in concert before, not too long ago. Well, not too long before the pandemic, I should say. I would probably say Ghost. I I gotta go with Ghost too. I think yeah. Ghost Face just musically was so incredible too. Like he was right. doing so much. His albums, his art of work was a lot better than I feel like than the rest of the group. Ghost then there got like four five classics. So pretty he's much, got a, he's yeah. got some. They miss. Fuck yeah, Spring Plaza. Hey, that's not a miss. That's a classic. Fish scale, first one. Mm. Pretty Tony album. Yeah, I, I can't think of many albums of his that that weren't classics. To be honest. Yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying that's on my head. Like going through the album titles and all these yeah. shits a hit. <laughs> Facts. 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 Yeah. My mom's a huge Wu Tang fan, so like. My parents are fairly young. They like went to school around the time I was. They were like in college around the time I was born. So my mom was like going to shows. She went to an Outcast concert when I was like two. And I'm, I'm at the college with her on like on her shoulders, mm-hmm. like watching Outcast shit, like '95. Like, my, my mom was. Uh, she told me a story. She uh, went to a DOS FX concert when she was pregnant with me. So I'm like, oh, like. Uh, music is just like something that is just it, it, was, it was meant to be. It was destiny. <laughs> My mom got me a shirt for my birthday. Uh, you know, seen the political signs that say presidents are temporary, but Wu Tang is forever. My mom had to get me one of those. So, so I, and my mom knows I I don't did not like Trump just as much as I did not like Biden. So, which is crazy because everyone in Delaware seems to love Biden here. So, why? Cause he's he's from Delaware. That's why they that's why they fuck with him. So, baby, I don't fuck with it. <laughs> Politics be on some shit, bro. Oh, they, some bullshit, bro. Everybody I met, be lying, bro. I everybody met his be lying so much. I like, met his son when I was no younger. Real people there. So I met Biden's son when I was younger. I was like in middle school. And uh, because I was doing student council when I was in middle school, and I just did it just to like. <laughs> so I ran for student council president when I was in middle school just to like say I did it because nobody thought I could win, and I was like, oh, I bet. And then I went and won. I was my school's president in seventh grade. I feel you. Literally seven. <laughs> no, it was eighth grade for me. It was when I was president, but still, like, I just did it as a big fuck you to everyone, pretty much, because I didn't, I did not want to do any of that shit. So they took us up to like the <laughs> like a place. <laughs> They took us up to like the, like a state capitol like office up in Dover, and we got to meet like Joe Biden's son, Bo Biden. I don't remember if that's the one that was like uh, on crack or whatever. But I remember you said what the fun one. I I guess that's what, that's what his name was. <laughs> fun one. But uh, yeah. but nah, I, I he he seemed uh, honestly he didn't seem like. You know how, like, Bo, I mean, Joe Biden, when you hear him talk, sometimes you feel like you lose brain cells trying to keep up with the conversation. Like, like no cap. Like, with Bo Biden, I didn't really feel that way. It's funny that his son's name's Bo. Like, I don't know why. It's just, that's fucking geeky to me, but. Steve Kerr has a son with the first name, Nick. Like, why would he do that? <laughs> like, what? he had to know. No, he man. had to know. Yeah, he's like uncle or granddad. You didn't even think about it. It's only a Nick. What name was I, I I know that's what happened, but like when he signed it, he had to be like, "Oh, Nick Kerr." Oh, oh. He probably said, "Oh man, I just fucked up, bro." <laughs> Nick Kerr. Y'all be gone. Like somebody, somebody said it out loud and was like, "What?" <laughs> 
I just, you know what? I feel like everyone that makes dumb decisions like that, they have too many yes men in their corner just saying, yeah, man, I think it's a good idea. Facts. Like, 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 Facts. listen, listen I'm, I'm just going to throw this out there. You know, you know, which hip hop artist has too many yes men in his corner. Little Lil Wayne has too many yes men in his corner where that man stepped on the stage and tried to play guitar. I don't know who in the right mind on his team <laughs> thought that was a good idea, but that was the like <laughs> most terrible thing to ever happen in the music world ever. Like, I don't think there's been, I, I'd, I'd rather listen to Ice J.J. Fish sing than listen to Lil Wayne play guitar, I swear to God. No, like, like, hey, for real. Yo. What was funnier at the time, the, the, the bad guitar playing by Wayne or with Ashley Simpson, uh, live vocal track. She hit that dance, that shameful ass dance. Um, hey, yo. No, nah, it's got to be that guitar, oh, that yo. Sh- that shit was crazy. It's got to be the guitar, though. That shit was terrible. Shit, bro, bro, like, I, I don't I don't know why he thought that was smart, man. Like, like, or why, like, I mean, he got clout off it. wasn't good clout. I mean, I, I'm sorry. I don't believe the, the phrase that all publicity is good publicity. That's the biggest fucking lie ever, bro. Because that, that was not a good look. <laughs> it was not a good look, man. For, for, for him... For Young Money, for anyone in his corner, that was a awful look. And I will continue to roast him for that <laughs> until he's in the grave. Until he's in the grave, I will continue to roast I'm him. I'm taking this one to the grave with me. The, the rock star Wayne days was not it. <laughs> Facts. Facts. You, Damn. Yeah. No, my favorite era of Wayne. I feel that for sure. That man was going hard. He, <laughs> he was trying to go hard. <laughs> How much, G? <laughs> Drop one, two, and three. Oh, speaking it was so wild though. Cause I was like, "I, right, why are you playing guitar now and making like rock songs?" Like you don't have to do this. You nobody told you to do this, bro. L- listen, man, I I have a dad and brother who are amazing guitarists. Like not even to guess, my own family, nothing like that. But they all, they all, they. All, they all, <laughs> but they they all they also don't like rap music like that, and I always try to like talk to them, trying to convince them to like try to get them to listen to certain things. Like I was able to put my dad onto Pimp a Butterfly because you know it was a a good like you know balanced cross genre type album. But uh, trying to get my brother to listen to rap and him knowing that Lil Wayne tried to play guitar, like they just didn't go well together. Like I I literally cannot get my brother to enjoy hip hop music, and it, it's it's I blame Lil Wayne for it. I really do. Nah, but blame your brother, bro. Oh, that too, that too. Yeah, but like, nah, facts. But I just, it's just not a good look when you're trying to when you're trying to get someone who doesn't like rap music to like rap music, and they see shit like that. It's just not good. I feel you. If you playing the game, Wayne take a bad jumper, and now you down by fifteen. Now you looking at your teammate like, look, man, we trying to win the game. We trying to put these people on rap. You out here fucking. <laughs> Speaking of which, man, I I'm know you, uh, you to go ahead and take a seat. I know you're a, you're a big basketball fan, man. Uh, sadly, I'm a, I'm a I'm a Wizards fan. Sadly, I'm mostly DC sports fan, so my Wizards are last in the East right now. The only thing you can smile about in DC is Ovechkin. Um, I mean, I don't know, man. Chase Young and, and the Washington football team are looking like they're gonna make some make some moves going forward, man. I had so much hope for Haskins. Hey, don't worry, bro. I, I did. Finna, you know what? You know, we I did put too. him on our backs, yo. The Steelers finna take Haskins to the Super Bowl, bro. I had. I. I it, it has to get along like this, black bro. Couple. I'm saying. I'm saying. It, it, I feel like Haskins when he first came into the league, he was not given a fair shake at all, like at all. I mean, one yeah. year he was drafted by a racist coach, Jay Gruden's racist. Drafted by a racist uh, GM with Bruce Allen. Drafted by a racist owner, a sexist owner, Facts. and then not not only all this. And again, I'm a fan of this team saying all this. So just remind you. Oh no! Uh, Scott Van Pelt ripped the, the Washington football team front office to shreds one and, night. And I, he, like, I didn't know this is bad. And yeah, he's from the terrible. DMV too, so you know how much that means to him. But anyway, so all like all this shit's going on. Then you, you, we drafted a quarterback that apparently the team didn't even want. So that that concerns me. Facts, so not, when he come when he, when he comes in. They don't even give him any reps with the starters in practice. Like he gets reps with the second squad, the demo, like the demo squad at most. So you're already setting him up for failure. The one game you throw him in when fucking Case Keenum's looking like ass against the fucking Giants, you put him in for set him up for failure with an offense that he doesn't know the plays with. He doesn't know, and he only knows one receiver, and that's Terry McLaurin because he played college with him. 
and goes and throws like three picks. And then people are like, oh, he's trash. He's just another Jameis Winston. I'm like, bro, like give him a chance. Like, he was just set up Jameis for failure. Jameis Winston, nice too. Yeah, Ron Rivera, who was just super tired of Cam Newton shit. <laughs> he was Facts. like, I ain't dealing with this. <laughs> Facts. Alex Smith got one leg? Sure. Put his ass Ron, in the game. You, you got you got to give creds to Ron Rivera, though, man. He's like he is changing this. Like him and our new team president, by the way, first black team president in NFL history. Shout out to Jason Williams. Uh, is that his name? I don't even know if I got his fucking name right. So fuck me if I'm wrong. We'll but anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, he they're really making moves to change it around. But I just I mean I don't think Dwayne was gonna be the guy in the end. I don't think he succeeded. I do think he. He ended up with the whole shit, the the strippers at the the party, and then the walking out of the team, like uh, before he was even supposed to leave the locker room. It just he was it, clocked out. He was clocked he out. Was, so it just it, his time his time was done. But I mean, I I rooted for him. I know I defended him for a while. I wish him the best of luck in Pittsburgh. And he won't be I, nice, I, bro. I, I I don't know if he'll ever be a starter again in the league. But hey, I mean, if he does, don't, don't even worry, bro. I already know Ben. Yo, Ben doesn't need. Ben does yeah, not. His last couple legs. Ben does oh, not yeah. need to play this season, yo. He said, "I'll take whatever pay y'all give me." That means they can literally give this man five hundred thousand dollars next year, and he will still play. Why? Bro, just he on his bread shit. He on his bread fire shit. G, he tried to. Bro, this ball. man was. This man was noodle arming forty yard passes, bro, throwing straight hey. quack quacks everywhere. That's been the wildest shit to me. Like growing up, now like a grown man watching sports is seeing quarterbacks you saw get drafted. We was in high school, or whatever. Or, yeah, shit. I'm like, I didn't know this was a thing because usually cats didn't play this long. So like all the quarterbacks we seen retire when we was younger, it's like ten season, twelve season. Yeah, bro, it's a lot of concussions. And you know Ben Ben was the worst, bro. This man was taking he took the most hits back for quarterbacks four years in a row. Nigga, that's so many hits. You cannot be getting hit like that. That is quarterbacks now that I mean medicine is a little bit better. Rules a little softer. Way softer. These niggas don't get hit. Quarterbacks do not like, get hit now. Yeah, they like 38, 39. I'm like, these niggas is old. Like, old as hell, So speaking yo. of quarterbacks, speaking of quarterbacks, who are we picking tomorrow night? Super Bowl. I don't know, bro. It's, I don't really care. I don't have, I don't care, bro. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> My team not Bro, all, all I'm going to say is, is if you got, no matter how much money you got in the bank, take all that money in the bank and throw it on that man, Tom Brady. That's the thing. Like, I never want to bet against Tom Brady. I'm not putting no money. Exactly, you can't, game, man. Bro. You can't. And don't but get like it twisted. Mahomes, bro. Mahomes you know is this magic, man. Bro. You know, know this man finna go. You know he's fin to destroy their defense, bro. Like, I don't think he hasn't faced a defense this hard in the playoffs yet, bro. Though, man. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, bro. I just watched your boys for a man, a man stat sheet. Bro, yeah, it, yeah, like, it doesn't you know. especially if their run if their run game is like hitting even just a little bit, bro, they're they're gonna destroy their defense, bro. And Tom Brady's just gonna have to keep up. Like that's how it's gonna be. It's gonna be a shootout. I don't think it's gonna be the defensive grind. Yeah. It's gonna be like forty. Neither deep well, I guess Tampa Bay's defense is good, but like the Chiefs defense yeah, is not this good. is we talking about the best offense for the last two years. Yeah. For sure, I right, just, three years, I just, three. I don't know. I, I'm really rooting for, like I said, in the future, come like ten years from now, Mahomes is gonna uh, pass Tom Brady. Bro, like, I don't all like, these, like Tom everything. Brady, bro. Like, like I don't, I, just, I, just, I can't I have, like him. I have so much respect fan. for him, though. You know what I'm saying? I, I know you're a no, Steelers I, fan, so you can't I, like I him. I respect him, bro. Like he is great at what he does, bro. He's a, right. he knows how to win. I won't say like. He's the best passing quarterback ever because there are definitely people who can throw like Aaron Rodgers oh, throws the me- ball better than this. Mechanics man. wise, he'll never be the goat. But in terms Aaron, of just winning bro, the games where it matters, like like, like Tom Brady's the at best the same at that. time. Could you imagine if Aaron Rodgers didn't have the worst coach in football and had anybody else coaching him, bro? His Why coach fucking sucked. McCarthy was, was so garbage, bro. Better Aaron than just Rogers coaching didn't him. Ha- he- he didn't have any receivers either, bro. Never. That's like, what I'm saying. Yes, he's never had a good GM. Like, they never put a good team around him. They, they, never. They, they, he and, would and, have and, five rings if he had any help, bro. Any any good receiver they got, they got. Like, they got they've them. had in a long time, bro. <laughs> like. That's what I'm, dude, like, look at every good receiver he's had. They got rid of Jordy Nelson. 
They got they everyone they had that was good. They got rid of them. Like they they never kept they good guys around this Green man, Bay. Yo, they played this man so his whole career they played him, bro. And they trying to do the same shit to Deshaun, bro. That's why he need to I'm leave, so bro. Deshaun in the bad days, he, he need, chill, like y'all gonna try to see him. He might need, need to see some him in some weapons, burgundy and gold bro. next year, man. He need to real. just nah. I got the ass that shit. No, he needs to bro, be. We get, we he got needs some, to be in the Steelers team, no. bro. Bro, we got weapons. Yeah, we about to get Najee Harris. We about to get <laughs> Najee Harris, bro. Our receivers are still fire, bro. Like, don't like, bro. Bro, I'm fit. telling you. Listen, the Washington football team is a, another good receiver away from being and a quarterback away from being like a contender in the NFC. We well, well, like we're really hard to win. Shit, <laughs> right now it's not. That's for yeah, sure. like especially, guys, especially with fucking Wentz I'm leaving and all that shit too. Like, don't, don't say the W word because the Bears talking about picking them up, and I might never be a Bears fan ever. Well, actually. I need to change that statement because I'm sitting here acting like Carson Wentz is good with what I just said. Because Carson bro. Wentz is like, yeah, they got Carson Jalen Wentz Hurts now. Carson Wentz Jalen not Hurts even that bad, bro. Y'all are playing my man. Bro, Yo, Carson, get out of here. He don't have, he don't have no help. But but like he's not ass. Y'all acting like he can't throw, bro. My man. Bro, the past. Bro, I'm acting like yes. I'm calling it like I see it. I don't, I don't, I don't, terrible. Yeah, I'm saying he's terrible, bro. For real, bro. bro he bro, need a better on, system, bro. Videos of him missing open people, bro. He need, the, yeah, but there's more videos of his wide receivers dropping the ball. Dropping passes. So he's got a point. He's got a point. Like, like, he, way more. Uh, Red Nelson Aguilar. Oh no, no. He, he said, uh, somebody caught a baby out of a burning building. He's like, at least I got better hands than Nelson. Oh, bro, this is a life for He said, yeah, he said, yeah, someone told that man Aguilar to start catching the man. So he took, come out here and get some lessons or something, I think is what he said. He, 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 Nelson Aguilar gave that man tickets to the game next week after that, yo. <laughs> He's funny as hell. See, but, like, he needed a better system. Once he moved to a different team, Nelson Aguilar had a great season this year, yo. Like, his season bro. was amazing. Compared bro, to previous I, years, I, I, I Carson Wentz needed a new system, I had a tweet bro. this year during the football season. I don't know how it went. It didn't go viral. It was after the Eagles had a game, and they dropped probably a million passes that game. And I was like, yeah, if you guys want to avoid catching COVID, go to Lincoln Financial Field because they ain't catching <laughs> shit over there. <laughs> That's facts. <laughs> That's definitely yeah. facts. But, no, wait. We didn't even talk about basketball that much. I, I just Bex. keep... I was about to talk about... uh. Well, first I was about to talk about Lamelo. That nigga been balling, yo. I love been hooping this year. It's, it's, it's in the name, man. Balling. He's it's in the yeah. name, bro. He's a f- oh my god. I love Lamelo ball. ball. I can't speak yeah. highly enough of him, man. But no, nah, the Wizards need to trade Bradley Beal. Get him to a place where he can win. And get traded. us a first round pick for it too. He said he don't want to be traded. I know, bro, and I respect the loyalty too. But John Wall also said the same shit. And look at John Wall. He's actually out in Houston balling right now. We got a point guard right now. We got a point guard right now that every back-to-back series, every back-to-back game series, he sits out the second game because he's soft. I don't like Russell Westbrook. I think he's terrible. He's all um, so overrated. He was a bad addition to the team. But like, Dude, jo- John, like, like, like we traded a guy away because he had injury issues for a guy who has injury issues as well and he's hurt. Like, I mean, he's not as good. Like, I don't get that. He has less injury issues. <laughs> I right guess. now, right? I don't know. Right? I don't know about that right now, man. <laughs> Not right <laughs> now, but John Wall was out for like two years, bro. They was like, bro, bro is you gonna he play? Was, he was, man. But then on time, another reason was financial shit. But the same, like Russell Westbrook yeah. got the, like a bigger contract than Wall, so I never His got that trade either. And we gave up a first round pick for him too, bro. I would really stress the Wizards season too much. Y'all got half the team is injured, the other half COVID. Bertrand, it, it wouldn't matter if they were if they had fucking Ebola. They like if it wouldn't matter like what they were sick with. It wouldn't matter if they were healthy, bro. They're still ass, man. Like, bro, like, no, bro, saying, like had, had the team injured y'all, is is a whole new team. Not a lot of time, no off season for real, for real. Thanks. I see how I would y'all season for real is going to start after All Star. <laughs> no, our, our our next good season ain't gonna happen for twenty years, bro. We're about to be the new Knicks. Our owner, listen, we had Ernie Grunfield as our GM for eleven years, and the only good free agent he ever got us was Gilbert Arenas. And you know what they, you know All what right. they, when they fired him, when they fired this man, the, instead of going out and seeking a new GM, they just hired his personal assistant who agrees with everything he does. So you just you, like like they're setting like the Ted Leonis, our owner. 
Leonis only cares about owning the Capitals. He does not care about owning the Washington Wizards. He doesn't care. He does not care at all. He he's a terrible. I'm so happy because I was I was tired of guard packs, bro. So tired of that shit. Yeah. Bulls Bulls got a glimmer of hope this year. We might snag an eighth seed. Levine, did. bro, that man is balling, yo. Oh my god, bro, he keeps getting better every year, dog. Bro, people one time I'm talking about Sixers. Knicks is trying to no, no one. I don't want none of y'all teams trying to trade you. Yeah. Come on, guys. He's staying here. Glory, Glory got hurt again though last night. Damn. This this was like being a Bulls fan. It's like a glimmer of hope, and it just snatched away. Like, yeah. Wendell's hurt. Glory's hurt. How long window? Like, we probably gonna end up having to get rid of Zach. There's no there's no way we can house him in convincing to stay. When everyone's getting hurt, the team we built around them is not that good. Y'all got no money, bro. Y'all can't. We had money. We had money. They just What's... they they didn't sign Lori to an extension. Otto Porter was the only big contract we've taken on in the past couple of years outside of Zach. Th- thank you for that, by the way. Fuck y'all for that. He gave <laughs> Otto got like twenty two million a year dollar contract to come off the bench. Yep. Zach, get, Zach and him get the same, same amount of money damn near. Like, <laughs> is that contract going to be up soon, too? So, we might just pay this man, Zach. For y'all. Bro, this man, Otto for Porter, real? this man, Otto Porter, had one season of scoring, like, 17 a game with a great three-point percentage, and they signed this man to, like, more money than any football players ever made. Like, like more yeah. money than, like, bro, like I he's making baseball money, bro. Timothy Mozgov got four years, sixty-two million, bro. I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" Yeah, bro. It was it, it was, was seventy-two so million. Hilarious, because <laughs> it was like the new cap agreement, or whatever, right? And so they people like the, the all the exceptions and like contracts kept growing, and so you had contract probably like Tyler Johnson signed four years, fifty million dollars. Um. Who the fuck is Tyler Johnson? <laughs> bro, literally. I know who he was, but like, he literally was anybody. Man. Like Tyler Johnson just looks like that white kid in gym class that like everyone says watch out for, and then like he just has bro, really like, average games. The bro, I like Tyler Johnson was mixed and it blew my mind. He's mixed? What? <laughs> yeah. Damn, never mind. Yeah, black, bro. No, no, no. Don't worry. I thought he was white up until like three weeks ago. But he's half black. Like, <laughs> like Tyler Johnson look like the nigga to sell drugs in college, like the white one to sell drugs. Exactly. Shit. Facts. Like, but like their contracts be out of pocket. Like that's the equivalent to like the NFL. Like if the Jets gave Barrios like four years, seventy million. Like being a third stream receiver, bro. Like he's that's never ever happening, bro. Like. You would That's think crazy. the NFL would have more money to give to their players, but the only the only thing about the NFL is you have to pay fi- a fifty three man roster, and then you have the practice squad. So it's like I get the, it, bro. Yeah, it's, it's a little it, bit harder. Like, I get I get I get why. You, yeah, I mean, like I mean, they, they, they were supposed so to bread, with the new with the new CBA. You were supposed to see more deals like that coming, but because of COVID, now the salary cap's about to go down again. So facts, like, facts, if facts. COVID wouldn't have happened, yeah, you would have seen like the NFL paying like. Your yeah. fucking linebackers, what the quarterbacks were getting paid, like you know, last like last year, you know what I mean? You would have seen that you, type I of shit. You. But now with COVID, it's it's fucking everything up. So every, you're gonna see. They said this off season, you're for NFL, you're going to see some of the like most like like brain blowing uh like free agents, like people getting cut from teams because of like people trying to save money. You're they're saying you're gonna see the most the, some of the like biggest that. names get cut. I like so. that a lot, but the ball season, hell yeah. I, I can't like, wait. <laughs> like the Bears and the Steelers, we gonna sign somebody that we ain't got no business. No business. No business. Like it's but somebody geez. like bro, watch us get JJ Watt, bro. Watch us have him and TJ, bro. Bro, I already know we are. I already know we are. How much, I, I bro? I'll bet y'all. I'll bet y'all any amount of bread, bro. I guarantee you, we sign that nigga, bro. He's gonna come to the Steelers because he wants to play with his brother. Exactly. Well, we don't have to give him any, like, bro. We can be like, hey, bro, two years, like fifteen million. He'll be like, all right, bet. Like, he won't give a fuck, bro. That would be love. That and then we could get rid of Bud Dupree. We won't even have to pay that man. Shit will be lining up. I like to see it. The Steelers is. Steelers might be having a nice season, bro. If if Haskins come through and, and can't 
and show out Ben <laughs> so he can start. Bro, it's crazy because Haskins used to do crazy shit in camp with us too. Like for real. Like I, know. Used to, I mean, I just don't know how him and Terry McLaurin just didn't work out, man. Like I know I know when he was thrown in earlier in yeah. the year, like our line wasn't as good earlier in the year. Our line was awful at the beginning of the year. But they progressively got better. And I mean, with one thing with offensive line, the only way for these guys who suck and have, don't have no experience to get better is to keep fucking playing. And sure enough, Chase Roulier, our center, who was like playing like ass early, early in the year, ended up being one of the top rated centers in the league at the end of the year. And we signed him to an extension. So, yeah, it, I don't know. I, I do feel like Dwayne was in a tough situation to even get the ball out of his hands early yeah, in the season. It, it, it was rough Every, for him, bro. Everything is about consistency. Facts. Facts. Well, it's. The only way you get better is you constantly do something. Exactly. Teams ain't going to get better. They'll constantly play with each other. Facts. The music not going to be good if you ain't constantly working on it. I mean, the week not going to be as good if you ain't constantly smoking that motherfucker. <laughs> this nigga. <laughs> Bro, that's why we consistently play Call of Duty. So that we can be good. You know what I'm saying? Me and my 147 KD. You know, so- I didn't realize that's a good KD because we have friends with like two somethings and three somethings. Bro. I didn't realize my one four seven put me in like the top, like top twenty percent of people to play the game. I'm like, oh shit, oh am yeah, decent at this shit. Yeah, I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna hold you, bro. I so I just I just got a PS5 and like my roommate got Call of Duty for it, and I suck ass at Call of Duty. I've not played Call of Duty like that since I was in middle school. Like, I just played it last night for the first time, and I remembered, okay, this is why I haven't played the games in, like, seven years, because I fucking suck at it. So I get back to it, bro. Bro, I wasn't even good at it back then. I knew how to play. Don't worry, they they gonna protect you for the first three months of the game. This thing called skill-based matchmaking. You're not gonna be in lobbies with us. You will never play with us, ever. (laughs) (laughs) You'll be saving, bro. Bro. I wish they didn't have school based matchmaking though. Facts. Like real. <laughs> bro, and like it can't be bro, on God, no cap. I'm not bad at Call of Duty. So before anybody calls me ass, bro, like that would be straight. We should be playing about the game. People are like, oh, you just ass at the game. Yeah, nah. no, I'm not ass at Call of Duty. I've never been bad at any Call of Duty. Like, not to boast myself, but like I've been I love Call of Duty, yo. It's not skill based matchmaking in that game. Because I be getting my ass beat in that fucking game online, yo. I can only play Warzone because if I play multiplayer, I know I'm finna get my ass beat. Like, it's not even fun, bro. There's no way they're the same KD as me, bro. Because they wouldn't be beating my ass like this. And see, it's the wild part. Like, if you, like, play at the Warzone, you get a Warzone, you got good KD in there. Yeah. They're like, okay, you're, you're, you're a good player. Yeah. The people would have played multiplayer, like, strictly. They play, like, Search and Destroy, and they're super toxic. And that's what they play all the time. They're not good at Warzone, but you get thrown in a match with them. It's over for you. Like, it's over. I played Search and Destroy once with the homies. I don't play that. They just died so fast, and they was talking so much shit. And I was like, ain't nah. no way. <laughs> nah. I Bro, I remember this. I played I played Warzone for the first time, and I was doing thing. I was like, "Yeah, this is ba- Call of Duty." Pretty much looked at Fortnite and was like, "Oh, that's fucking cute." And they just made like, yeah, made exactly made an actual did. like battle royale type game. Bro, like, I had Black Ops Four. It was playing Black Ops. Like, oh, this shit is off the chain. No, bro, X. no, I hated Blackout, bro. They had friendly fire on. Why the fuck would you have friendly fire on a game, bro? Like, I'm sitting here in the Man, car, bro. He said, he said, bro, back up and pick me up, bro. I back the whip up. I run over this man. I'm like, oh, shit, my bad. Then I go forward, bro, and run over this man again to full kill him. I'm like, bro, I got to get off this shit, bro. I can't play this no more. It wasn't no buyback either. It wasn't. No there wasn't. It. it was terrible, yo. Niggas had to watch me play the whole game. Just ride the silence like, damn. And then you had to, like, run around and pick up attachments. So, like, I'm sitting here with the ugliest gun, bro. I got a silencer on a sniper scope on a pistol, like bro, it would be the dumbest shit. Like I'm oh, not trying to do this, <laughs> bro. I cannot play like this. And uh, that's what I'm glad. Like, the the jump to Warzone and like the system they have now, it's like it, it works now. It's- yeah, it was clean. Speaking so of- we only got like a few minutes left before I guess before we wrap it up. Cause we're about like at an at an hour. I just want to talk about some music a little bit more before we kind of like yeah, we kind of kill I mean, the show. Bro, for, real, for real, we can probably just keep talking and then we can just chop some shit up and take it out for real if it's just oh for sure for it. sure man. But yeah man, I just wanted to, uh, I wanted to pick your brain a little bit about about Jay Dilla man. I was playing. Did you hear his new uh, thing that came out the other day? By the way, 
Uh, Jay Dilla, he had a new project that came out the other day. They dropped one on Apple Music. I think it was like an anniversary project or something. It was Jay Dilla and JD project. Oh shit! Got the vinyl and all that, man. Right in front of me, like in my, I have a record shelf under my desk. But uh, what? So how? How? Um, who are your influences? Let me ask you that first of all. Uh, James, Yancey, Jay Dilla, JD. Uh, I was 13, 14, watching Adult Swim, and I heard the donuts. Like, Adult Swim bump. I asked my mom for a laptop the next day. I was like, I want to make beats. Like, that <laughs> It just clicked in my head, like, I want to do this. I want to make yeah. some beats. And, like, and then it, like, developed to, like, listen to Mad Lib. And like mind you, like I, my background, like influences, I have a very. Uh, it's, it's like musical in the sense, of, like my my parents were hip hop heads. Not musical in the sense where I was like playing instruments and shit when I was growing up. It was more so like my parents had a really good taste in music, mm-hmm. like rap, R and B, soul. We was at church, so we had gospel music. It's like gospel music really is like for a lot of artists, it's a very very critical uh, place of music. It's just having musicality of like. Like churches and the bands and things come together. It's nice. Um, so I had a musical background in that sense. I didn't start paying attention to looking at album credits and stuff like that. So I was like 13, 14, because I was like, oh shit, Jay Dilla, like, who is, I need to figure out all of his work. Mm-hmm. And then he had passed that same year in 2006. So I was like, oh my God, I need to look at everything he did and like really. So that's around the time like YouTube was critical for just uh, everything and everything. I learned how to make beats via YouTube, looking up how to chop and logic and a video of Just Blaze pops up. Oh yeah, that's Just Blaze from The Blueprint. So I'm looking at everything Just Blaze did and looking up drum kits and now I'm like, oh shit, Alchemist shit, fire. Let me look up Alchemist drum kits and now I'm painting everything Alchemist does. So like, it really was the people I grew up listening to and idolizing and trying to figure out how to be them, they, they my influences. So it's JD, Mad Lib, Alchemist, uh, I'm missing somebody. JD, Mad Lib, Al, Just Blaze, like Pete Rod, Kanye, Pharrell, obviously, yeah. like, yeah. How do you feel about Flying Lotus? Oh, what? One of my favorite producers. Is it mean, anything, anything from Adult Swim, like the yeah. Children album? Like, I'm all about that Adult Swim shit, man, for real. Uh, that's one of the craziest things I've done in my lifetime, is work with Adult Swim to this day. That's fire. Like, my friends were watching TV, watching Adult Swim, and like, saw my face. Yeah. Saw my commercials for Wonder Kid, or like, when they were playing, they, they play my music when they when Tsunami aired uh, Akira for the fir- very first time. Mm-hmm. I had a bump during the, those commercial blocks. I'm like, yo, that's crazy. Black, uh, so you know, Black Jesus, the very first episode, the bumper, like the outro to like next episode was my music playing. Like, Fire. forever indebted to Adult Swim. Like, yeah. I shit that so much because that's how I, I kind of came to my own listening to music, being like, Oh shit! This is some of my favorite music. Matches some of my favorite television. So nostalgic for me, and for that to come full circle, and then have kids be like, "I found you know those swim was really tight." I make you stand. I'm like, what? The influence is crazy. Is is there like a music director through Adult Swim that happens to like all that that, that sound of music that Dilla that Madlib like who is there a person behind Adult Swim that kind of connects like like the artists with your type of sound together like and who is that person if uh, if there is a person? Shout out to me, Jason. You can find him on Twitter at, at Clark Nova One. Um, yeah, no, he's been one. He's like vice president of Tsunami, like like co founder, like. So they when they brought back Fooly Cooly and revamped it, that was his call. He's, he's super cool. He uh was telling me stories of like working with Doom or working with Dilla and it was wild because like he had people on my B tapes off Bandcamp and hit me up. And 
I don't know if he really knew how like much I I love adult swim. So like when we started talking, it all made sense, and that led to me doing like adult swim bumps. And then when I started working on my album, I pitched the idea of having like my videos on there. But yeah, it is that guy. He has amazing taste. Uh, it's tapped in. Yeah, very influential. But to say he, he sounds super influential to be able to connect all those. I feel like Adult Swim is almost a, a subgenre of rap music now. The Adult Swim, like hip hop, for real, it almost is in a certain way. Like when I think of literally, when I think of Doom, I think of Mad Lib, I think of you, I think of Jay Dilla, I think of Flying Lotus. Uh, I always root it back to like Adult Swim type music, like for real. And I, I think. I saw anime was playing, you feel me? Like. <laughs> facts. Hey, facts. Facts, facts. Bro, something else I wanted to talk about. Uh, did you get the rest of your equipment for streaming? I'm literally waiting on RAM. So, okay. Mike's here, obviously. The HD camera got me looking nice. <laughs> got me looking nice. We got the... <laughs> yes, sir. So, um, <laughs> um, yeah, no, nah, I literally... I got to reorder, though. I, like, I ordered 16 gigabytes of RAM for my laptop. Yeah. And the odd thing about my laptop is this. I took the CD drive. Out. I got. I'm still using 2012 MacBook. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, I took the CD drive out, put a whole new drive, a terabyte drive, with eight gigabytes of RAM, and I got like four hard drives around here, and like hell space and backup shit. I need. I need 16 gigabytes to really like. I don't want no kind of latency lag yeah. or nothing. And so like, I've done some test runs. With Twitch and like OBS and whatnot, and like trying to figure out the best way to get sound through the, the mm-hmm. interface. Or I'm a perfectionist, so like I feel like I've been kind of like toying with this for like six months about like wanting to stream and how I would do it. And so I'm like, I finally got it like a semi figured out. But I'm gonna get this 16 gigabytes of RAM for the laptop, make my shit run like a Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> Eight, eight, eight gigs is good for a laptop. That's decent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 16 is nice. Like bro. gaming on here, I'm making music on here. It's cool. 16? Yeah, facts. Double that? 16? What? I'm going to be running hella sessions, putting ridiculous amounts of instruments in there just because. Just because you can. <laughs> yeah. I feel that. Yeah, no, that's definitely fire, though. Excited for them shit. Shit. Streams, streams coming soon. I want to make beats. I mean, show my little process. Talk to people about music in the yeah. rap. I mean, it's it's really yeah. So in a way, I, I fuck with the fact that quarantines kind of forced people to, to towards Twitch and back to live streaming. I feel like I'm back in high school. Facts. You stream and like shit. We even back doing Skype calls. That's all like. Facts. I Skype. He said, "I, I re-downloading." <laughs> because we got Skype, Zoom calls. Is everything goes in cycles yeah. in terms of, like usage? Even Clubhouse kind of felt like AOL chat rooms or like Omegle or whatever that shit is like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The internet is Uvu. Uvu. Uvu, man. The internet got this weird way of like working shit back around in terms of trends and stuff that we do. Like everything right now feels very like AOL, AIM. Kind of like we're, we're doing video chats. This is Clubhouse. Facts. Twitter is literally just Tumblr. Like. Facts. Without logs, like Instagram is failing. Yeah. TikTok is genius. TikTok is genius. Um, they algorithms be crazy, man. That's yeah, my favorite. I'm saying like, I, I never, I never used TikTok before, bro. For real, I don't use TikTok either. The reason I don't, it's because I have too much pride, and I used to love Vine to the death of me. And I feel like Vine, like when they got rid of Vine, I feel like they took away like a media platform for actual funny people and just created TikTok to give yeah. it to white girls that are not funny at all. No, no like white girls facts, don't have a platform bro. now, and I don't that's like that. Facts. Corny Vine ass white girls have the have a platform now, and like, I don't like it. Facts. It was way more, but like that's not why I don't like it, bro. I don't get on it because like. That shit will literally destroy my time. Like, it will destroy my time. And I can't, I can't. Hey, there's still two hours from you. Yeah, like, I can't let that happen. So I just never downloaded it and I never got into it. So people will send me shit and I'm like, bro, I'm not looking at that. <laughs> That's what if I see a TikTok like, in the corner, I will not watch it, bro. Like, I'll, I'll see it on Twitter if it was really funny, bro. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> My look is like Twitter, like so for for the longest Twitter was like the thing that she said on first, right? Mm-hmm. The funny joke will start on Twitter, or like a challenge will start on Twitter, or Instagram. That was TikTok. TikTok right. may not have the news and shit first because people got recorded. Yeah. Twitter very in real time. But as far as like jokes and like memes yeah. and shit. And like videos and whatnot, it's starting to become like TikTok, then Twitter. Like Twitter's yeah, like the, that's, the news that's true. sports. And it used to be news sports joke the whole thing. Now <laughs> TikTok is like, nah, we the youngin in the game. All the yeah, game. but like Twitter always still has like Twitter moments though, which are just always like those will always be better than being on TikTok to me. Like exactly, Twitter moments are goaded, bro. Yeah, how many like good. legendary tweets there are? Like you don't think a legendary? T- I know TikTok's young, but like, yeah, there's not. You know, there's no TikToks that I feel like are gonna go down to history like there are tweets. Facts. Yeah, no, that that's facts. All right, Gary, a member of Twitter. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> I've always got myself in trouble quite a few times on Twitter. <laughs> oh, I get Shit myself dangerous. in trouble about twice a week usually. No okay. cap. That's not well, that I good. Was, I, when IHOP was was doing that weird rebrand shit, talking about what is the beast? Oh thing. yeah. <laughs> My smart dumbass said it's National House of Bitches. Yeah, I said the same shit too, and people call me stupid for it. Well, un- unfortunately for me, people call me stupid. That shit got like fifty thousand retweets. I had to Damn. that shit. <laughs> yeah, I had like two. Re- I had like two retweets, and that was it. So, damn, my bad, bro. <laughs> oh, you're good. <laughs> you had the same twenty four hours. <laughs> uh, like, hey, that ass, bro. Step up. <laughs> facts, 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 facts. I, I, I love joking around on Twitter. That shit is. That shit is, shit is too it's, funny, it's, bro. It's the best times for real. I've I've made friends through that app that I've like Fact. never met in person, but just Fact. because they make funny tweets, like just happen to bring us together, man. That shit is wild. Like I'll even before like people know I do music, people be like, I kid you not, I'm at a store opening when there's a store in Chicago called uh, No Shirt, sure. Race Sneaker Store. My homegirl from So Lash is a hardest DJing. I'm next to her in the booth. Somebody come up to her like, oh my God, look at DJ and super cool. I'm like, yeah, cool, right? Cool. He turned to me. He like, oh my God, your tweets are so funny. I'm like, I'm a platinum fucking producer. <laughs> she like, what the fuck? I was dying laughing on the inside. So I'm like, what the fuck? Guys, like, that's what you know me for. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Now my tweets becoming infamous. I didn't need this in my life, bro. This shit was hilarious as hell. I'm like, bro, what? I got like, oh, granted, I didn't order my plaque because this shit's is four hundred dollars. But I don't, I don't feel like doing that shit. But like, I got accolades, nigga. Like, fuck, like, like, yeah, like, don't, don't, don't be, don't be disrespected me like that. <laughs> I know I'm funny, but damn, bro. Bro, the buddy said my my manager. I hosted the show on Twitch for uh, Move Forward Music. Where I'm like interviewing hella producers. Super fun gig. Interview just plays Alchemist, Jake One, Black Milk, Tiny Digital. Fuck it. Great show, right? I tell my manager I got the job, like hosting. He was like, You might have to make a burner account for your Twitter. And I'm like, How do you think I got the job? They think I'm funny. Twitter's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. been a great tool. Um, yeah. It's a really good tool. Hella people. Facts. And Probably got me in some rooms that I probably wouldn't have been in before. Just yeah, you know, yeah. Okay. Um, do you fuck with Clubhouse? I hate Clubhouse. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of Clubhouse either. Um, I don't I even haven't even used it yet. It has its moments. Mm-hmm. There were certain times where, like I only did a, a Neptune's appreciation room and Fan Lay came in and was telling hella stories about Neptune. Yeah, that's fire. She was fire. Oh, like the Rockefeller Appreciation Room on, on mm-hmm. Jay Z's birthday, and uh, Just Blaze called me a Rockefeller baby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Moments, but yeah, but the majority is yeah, nah, nah. Yeah. yeah, nah. The beat, the beat battles are cool. Shout out to Cardo, big shout out to Cardo. Mm-hmm. Battles are nice, tough. It's moments though. It's not yeah. really flesh thing because it's still a lot. It's too much. It's like up in the air about Clubhouse. Like, there's no real fact checking. 
Facts. Sorry, if people would run all the way the other way with it, and then facts. No, this shit facts. Was fire. Um, we didn't really have anything else we really wanted to ask about, bro. Um, so Go. I guess we finna just wrap it up unless you got something else you want to talk about. Dave, give the shout out to Exotic Leaf, bro. Oh, bro, I'm not gonna lie to you, yo. I didn't do, I didn't do my, I didn't do my research yet, guys. Um, sorry, good, but shout You're out good, to man. Exotic Leaf, bro. Uh, it's we'll long, cut the, we'll cut, we'll cut that part. <laughs> no, 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 bro. Don't worry, bro. Shout out to Exotic Leaf. You know what I'm saying? If you really want to smoke some good shit, be on that wave. But, but uh, 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 if you enjoy getting high, come subscribe. So, just to kind of uh, like add to that, Exotic Leaf is a basically an alternative to Funnel or Graba. It's a brand based out of, out of the DMV, and they take the mold and nest out of the, the funnel, and it's got right. no preservatives in it, so it's a lot healthier for you than your traditional Funnel or Graba or Fronto, so it's a lot better for you. Um, Man, and pretty Hell much, yeah. yeah that pretty much. shit is terrible for you, yo. People make fun of this, but I, I don't roll weed. I I've been stuffing cones for three years. But do you hey, know bro. how to roll? Bro, you hey. gotta learn just because. Like, hey, just you know what? I'm, a, I'm actually glad Dude, that you, you said that. Even though you don't need it, bro. Even though you don't need it, you have to learn just, bro. It, it's therapeutic. I'm actually glad that you said this. So, Pete, before, before Blair says this, and this, this is pre COVID, if I pulled up to your house and I knew who's gonna smoke, I would present you with a cone. I'm Jamaican. Like, we brought some farms, I already don't pass the week at all. They give, they'd rather give you weed. Roll up and smoke yourself before they smoke with you. So I want to pull up to all these cribs and be like, I'm going to smoke, and here, here's a call for you. Here's a call for you. We're going to smoke now. So I've never needed to be like, oh, let me roll up right quick. Good. Nah, I'd come prepared. I'm a Virgo. I'd come prepared. I, I, I feel it, bro. I'm, I feel it. It's still therapeutic, though. <laughs> See, he, here's now Now that we got that squared away, now I don't feel as bad and I can get something off my chest. So I know how to roll a blunt, but I cannot roll a paper to save my life. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I don't like blunts unless they're a wood. Uh, I love to smoke a bamboo sheet with funnel leaf in it. I just feel like it just, I just love this. I love, I love, I love the, the nicotine high I get from it, the tobacco. I love like just the paper just smokes a lot smoother. And I don't know how to roll a paper, so I use a joint roller literally every time. Just throw it in there and roll it up. It's quick too. Crazy shit I seen. I was in high school. We uh, a couple of our homies had friends at Temple College. We pull up. We, it was crazy because like my homie Phil uh, had his brand Tastemakers back in the day when we were in high school, and we would shoot vlogs, like day to day videos, like. Mm. The shit that people want now, we were like kind of like ahead for thing. We were vlogging everything. Yeah, we had merch. We did concerts. Like the shit is kind of like the blueprint for now. Yeah. And we pulled up to Temple. And he was dropping some shirts, like doing like a drop. We like that photo shoot and shit. But I seen my man's with two big ass mason jars and a joint roller. He was just churning them bitches out. <laughs> Turn it I'm up. like 17, like, what? That's a lot of drugs. Like, it's, <laughs> hey, yo. That's a lot of drugs. Damn. I'm still kind of sick. Neither one of y'all can roll. Papers. I never needed to. I get, I, I get in your, I get in your case, bro. You started late and you was like, you know, there's no point in even learning because, like. I don't like oh. tobacco. I hate tobacco. My dad's been smoking cigarettes forever. I hate tobacco. I hate to smoke yeah, it. Yeah, I feel that. I, I, I instantly. I want to be like currency. I'll, I'll smoke paper. Yeah, I feel that. I typically smoke papers. I started smoking out of a, a dry herb vape for a lot more too, just because it's healthier. But like, yeah, you get, you get see, that's the it's a different type of high, bro. Like that shit is like a sharp high. It's weird. Black folks didn't care about glassware so much because one, you don't come, you don't like a crackhead. You ain't comfort in your home. You have a home. Uh, two. <laughs> you save so much weed smoking out of bowls. G. I don't personally smoke out of bowls. I just I like smoking joints. But you save. So I've seen like the real pothead homies where you they smoke like wax. They got shattered. Then motherfuckers, weed be lasting forever in their house because they hit a bowl, hit a bong. 
That's facts. And like, bro, you just hit that John, hold it in for a deep little 30 seconds, you know, get get yourself right. And you good. The whole joint hot. Bro, yeah, like it's like you just smacked the whole J. Like it's crazy. <laughs> I don't know why more people don't do it though. People be out here rolling two point twos. Like, bro, why? You a whole to... three five in the back like, with bro, bro, listen, you do not need e- that. <laughs> every morning I smoke a spliff and I drink a cup of tea every morning. It's like my cigarettes and coffee. No no cap, bro. That shit be soothing, man. For real. That is the most hey, like hey, the, no, the I'm best gonna say. The yoga and the weed, so great. Yes, sir. Yes, so yes, sir. I get back on track, but you and me both, bro. I fell off for a little bit, bro. I'm about to get back on my shit. Yoga. <laughs> I was smoked right before. Yeah, it's fire. At the end, in that piece, it just makes you just feel good, bro. Like you be ready to start your day too. Like I did my shit in the morning, bro. It was just so nice. Hey, just smack the yoga, drink a smoothie. That's why I was coming yes, in the studio nine to five. I wake up, yep. routine, ready to conquer the day. Around five o'clock, roll around. Facts. Place to come do it. Yep. Relax. Facts. Relax. 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 <laughs> Damn, I feel that, bro. But um, yeah, bro, we finna wrap this up. We kind of deep into this shit, but this was a good ass convo, so I ain't Facts, mad bro. about it. Facts. Um, anybody y'all want to give a little shout out to before we close this shit out? Yeah, we uh we already gave our shout out to Exotic Leaf, just them again. You know, if you guys want to smoke a uh, more healthier funnel leaf or grab a leaf, Exotic Leaf's got you. It's got no preservatives, no mold, no no nest. It's a lot healthier for you, a lot better for your lungs. So go grab that Exotic Leaf. You can follow them on Instagram at Exotic Leaf Seventeen. Go hit them up, and they'll they'll hook you up. Facts. Um, bottles and all that good shit. Yeah, yeah. Who do I want to shout out? Shout out to that man, Jawan. He's on uh, Paradise Island season three right now. You know what I'm saying? My boy finna try and find true love. He yeah, no, those big shout outs to my boy. He funny as shit, too. So definitely. Uh, also, shout out Small Axe Peppers. I know he not here, but if he was here, he would want to say shout out to them. Uh, it's just a local hot sauce brand. They donate money, bro, to help people out. So definitely check that out. Um, come on, come on, shout, out. shout out to my boy Adonis. We finally dropped the Lord of the West this year. Yes, and sir. Shout out my brother Topaz Jones, who just yes, won an award at Sundance for a short film, and he's dropped a single yesterday. Yes, sir. Album on the way. Album on the way. I can't. I can't say much, but <laughs> we gonna enjoy it. I'm. I'm excited for that though. Yeah. Facts. All right, y'all. Yo, thank you for tuning in to the. Season two's first episode, yo, we're excited as hell to be back. You know what I'm saying? It's a motherfucking party up in here. Uh, <laughs> but thank you for coming through, Thilo. Uh, big shout outs to everybody, yo. We love y'all. Peace out. Bye. Safe. Love y'all. All right.